the Seahawks get absolutely rocked by the Ravens. Welcome back to another episode of the Seattle Sports Show, Seahawks Post Game Show. I'm your host, Mikey, and today, unfortunately, we have to talk about just the Seahawks, like I said, absolutely getting rocked by the Ravens today. Um, I mean, the story of this game is that the Seahawks showed they are not ready to say they are contenders based on this performance. Baltimore, we know going into this game throughout the year, they had been looking like they are contenders for the Super Bowl. Right now, Seahawks, based on what they did against this potential Super Bowl team, they they are looking like a team with the record uh, and the rest of what they've been doing this year. They're looking like a team that is a playoff team, but not a contender for the Super Bowl. Uh, this, there was just too much stuff that just did not go right against uh, a top contender. So, I uh, I mean, they can honestly, they can't honestly. Uh, look at this game and and uh, say, yeah, we're we're contenders for the Super Bowl uh, with with how we're playing right now. I mean, uh, I mean, we're we're gonna we're gonna go over the numbers. So let's uh, let's kind of just go over again the 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 story of this game and uh, how the it played out for the Seahawks offensively in the first half. Um. You know, on our first drive, uh, it's quick three and out. Uh, JSN bobbled a third down catch that was on the sideline, so we had to punt. Second drive, um, you know, it was looking like, okay, Lockett is showing back up again today. He's making catches on the sideline. Gino is avoiding sacks uh, and, and uh, scrambling around and gaining yards. Um, uh, and... So it's looking like, okay, maybe we'll get something going. But then Baltimore, their run defense is just, uh, it was too much. They were stuffing uh, Seahawks rushing attempts. Uh, that defensive line, pass rush, they were awesome today against the Seahawks, uh, both getting pressure and just getting their hands on the ball. Uh, on the second drive, a pass was batted down on third down, and we ended up having to punt. Uh, Dixon did a great job of getting it down inside the five, uh, but, uh, I mean, that, that was the best thing that happened on, on, on that drive. On our third drive of the uh, first half, Baltimore continued to just totally stuff the run. Uh, we could not get the run game going against them at all. And you know how important that is to this offense. Uh, we couldn't get that going, so you can imagine how uh, this this you know how how this outcome uh, came to be with us not getting any run game going. Lockett, uh, you know, again, he was still showing that hey, he his clutch on on third downs uh, on this drive, uh, but ultimately. Uh, the coverage in the backfield uh, tightens up for the Ravens. Pass rush gets to Geno. They get a sack, and uh, uh, and then we end up uh, having to punt again. Uh, on our fourth drive, Baltimore pass coverage um, is just too good uh, again. And uh, now, by the time we get our fourth offensive drive, their pass rush is really starting to produ produce more pressure. They're starting to get in the groove by the fourth drive. And uh, Gino just made an absolute horrible throw that was like at least 10 yards off 
um, and it's uh, intercepted. Now, this specifically uh, uh, pass here, it looked bad on Gino. Uh, Gino, again, it's great and it's refreshing that we have a quarterback who will just, after a game, go up there and take responsibility for things and um, say you know, what he did uh, wrong uh, on the play and, and take a responsibility and not pass blame to his teammates. So uh, that's great to hear uh, him address that and blame himself on here. Now, if you heard uh, Tyler Lockett's post-game interview, he says that was a miscommunication uh, on his part and, uh, you know, who, who will I guess we'll never a hundred percent note because you know both of those guys uh, to the media are going to put the blame on themselves. Uh, if you watch the play, I think it is clear that there was miscommunication. Uh, I mean, most of the time, the quarterback is going to have it right, right? because they're the one that is relaying the message. Now, a quarterback could uh, relay the message wrong. Uh, they could accidentally say the wrong route, and that causes that uh, receiver to run uh, the route that they heard. And uh, that's the quarterback's fault for saying the wrong route. Uh, or, you know, the... You know, the other thing could happen is the receiver just hears the route wrong, so they run the wrong route, and the quarterback throws where they are expecting the route to end up. If you believe Lockett, um, that's maybe not where Lockett was supposed to end up uh, based on the call. Uh, Gino was throwing it to where he thought Lockett was going to be uh, after breaking, uh, you know, uh, on his route, and... Uh, you know, that just that just ended up being a, a bad play for the team overall. Uh, in the moment, it looked especially bad for Gino. Hearing them both talk about it, uh, I'm just willing to chalk that one up and say, hey, that was just, just bad miscommunication. And uh, that could be, that could, that could go either way. It's on, that could be on either player. Uh, our next drive, our fifth drive, uh, again, you know, the same old story, uh, run can't get going, uh, pass rush keeps getting there. Uh, they get another sack on this drive and we go three and out again, uh, on our next drive, we got a much needed big play from DK for 40 yards. Uh, and then we hit the two minute drill, uh, Lockett got a small chunk, Charbonnet, uh, got a small chunk and was able to rush for, sh uh, for a first down, uh, and then he was stuffed on a draw play. And uh, again, that defensive line batting a ball down at the line. And uh, that was on third down, and we settled for a field goal. And then uh, we, we get a ball one last chance before the half. Again, that defensive line gets the hands up. They bat the ball down. Uh, the offensive line... Let the pass rush get to Gino for another sack. Then Gino is stripped all the way back in field goal range for Baltimore, and uh, that was our last. That was the last drive. Uh, uh, just horrible. It was so demoralizing that to start this drive, uh, we were just needing a few yards to get into field goal range, and then. Uh, you know, just some bad plays and uh, and penalties brought us all the way back uh, to a point where um, uh, Gino gets stripped, gets the ball stripped from him, and where he gets the ball stripped from him, we got we had got moved so far back that they were already in field goal range. Um, so if, if we talk about the defense. Uh, in the first half and, and talk about how we kind of led up to that point. Uh, our first drive, that we allowed one first down and then forced them to punt. And it was looking like, hey, this this game is going to go back and forth this way today. It's going to be a defensive battle. Uh, second drive, 
we stuff their run attempts, uh, we stop them on a third and long, and then you're feeling good. You're feeling good, right? You're like, okay, uh, if we can, if our defense can hold like this all day, uh, we're going to have a chance. And then the third drive, Lamar, he's MVP this year, right? He's playing MVP level. I don't know if he will be the MVP, but right now, I I, I would say um, he's he's right he's right there as being one of the favorites. Uh, he's able to scramble. He gets a short gain on this drive. They start finding open spots in the zone and, and start moving the ball. You know, taking advantage of uh, the zone coverage and uh, taking those small chunk yards. Um, overall, our pass coverage was still tight in man situations and we were preventing big plays. Um, but Lamar, you know, he was just able to use the threat of his legs to get the offense going, whether he's running or if he's scrambling, uh, and then passing out of, uh, the scramble. That is, that's huge. Um, uh, uh, earlier tonight I was in a argument with a friend about, uh, about running quarterbacks. And uh, we were kind of just kind of talking about how, um, you know, he, he's wondering if defenses have figured out how to defend against a, uh, the, the running quarterbacks. And he's wondering that because uh, he's looking at stats and individual quarterback stats, um, their individual rushing totals are down this year. And that's one side of the story, right? Uh, the other th- thing that you also have to talk about when the success of running quarterbacks is not just not just the rushing yards they get, but how they're rushing opens up the passing game as well. I think that's the other thing that um, shows that defenses in the NFL have still not figured out how to stop a running quarterback. Uh, Because running quarterbacks have evolved over the last 20 years to where before uh, you would get a running quarterback and you would say, okay, well, uh, the reason why they're a running quarterback is because they're not, they're not the greatest passing quarterback. Uh, you know, typically back in the day, uh, you know, if we if you had a rushing quarterback, they were not most of the time they were not great uh, passers of the football, and they were usually not very accurate. Uh, you know, t- fast forward twenty years, you got players like Lamar Jackson, you got Patrick Mahomes, uh, you you got uh, Aaron Rodgers, you you got. Uh, uh, Josh Allen, you have a ton of players who can run and throw on the run. So not only are they gaining yards by rushing, but when they start running, you have to uh, you have to account for them running. And so defenders start coming up, and then that gets receivers open, and then the receivers, uh, you know, have more time to find an open spot for the, uh, to get to for the quarterback to throw uh, to them, and uh, you know that that's the that's the other threat of the uh, of the running quarterback, uh, especially these days, is not just the rushing yards that they're gaining; it's also uh, how they can start to run, uh, but better than they ever have been able to before is run, I mean, throw on the run and throw accurately on the run and still get uh, a big, big place. And that's what Lamar is doing right now. That's what um, we've seen him do in his MVP year. And again, he, it looks like he's doing it this year. Um, and it's just, it's just hard for any defense to stop, you know? Um, you can you can look at his individual uh, statistics as a, a rusher uh, and what he gets as for rushing yards, uh, but the fact that uh, you know he can he can still run 
and gain uh, yards throughout a game, and it's enough of a threat that they have to start uh, accounting for it uh, that uh, he's able to uh, get the receivers open because of that threat. It, that just kind of shows how uh, defensives just have not figured out how to stop uh, a running quarterback yet. Uh, and uh, they weren't able to get it done here. Uh, and, uh, you know, Lamar drives him down uh, from the to the five-yard line, and then Gus Edwards is able to drive it in uh, for a touchdown from there. On their next drive after that, Lamar rattles off a huge run after avoiding a sack. And again, uh, just that threat of the run is... Uh, something that's just hard to deal with. Uh, for us on this drive, though, Boye Mafe just continues to be one of the best pass rushers in the entire NFL this year. Um, he is winning a one-on-one -on -one, uh, pass rush uh, situations more than uh, almost everybody in the NFL this year. He wins here. He gets to Lamar. Uh, and, and uh, forces the fumble, and the Seahawks get the ball. And as we know already, they weren't able to do anything with it. <laughs> uh, the fifth drive, uh, uh, here, our, our pass rush was not getting pressure on this drive, and you could tell that they were starting to get tired, and uh, this was allowing... Uh, the uh, Ravens uh, running backs to start uh, rattling off some big runs on this drive. Uh, and they were continuing to get big chunk plays on this drive uh, passing as well. And that led to them getting another rushing touchdown. Uh, and then they got another drive uh, where a big play tray came to play and he knocked the ball out of the receiver's arms while tackling him. Uh, to get the ball back with under one minute. They, they went to review on this one um, because uh, Trey was bringing him down to the ground, you know, and the player landed on top of him, hadn't touched the ground yet, and then Trey uh, reached up and punched that ball out, and uh, the play stood. It was a fumble, and, you know, uh, I, I just, the, the defensive backs for the Seahawks this year just continue to... Uh, uh, show that they are uh, the top of the league and you know it's not just one player it's not just two of them it's not just three of them it's 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 the whole crew of them that it's amazing uh, how good they all are and how good they are together uh, on our seventh drive uh, again on their seventh drive this is the one where uh, we fumbled the ball away after almost starting the drive off in field goal range and then fumbling it <laughs> for them to be in field goal range already. And thankfully we were, all, we were, we were able to hold them to only a field goal. Okay. And then we were thinking, okay, well, not, not the greatest first half. Uh, but, uh, lately, uh, the second half is where the Seahawks come to play. Uh, the Seahawks and allowed, uh, a touchdown in the second half in like what four or five games so we're thinking okay they're gonna they're gonna come out strong in the second half and uh you know and then the offense will hopefully get going and, and we can catch back up and get in this thing uh but in the second half our first drive on offense three and out quick and easy three and out second drive um our, our run game just continuing to get smothered. Uh, Gino stared down Noah Fant on a play uh, on, on the second drive and almost threw a pick six. Luckily, it wasn't, and we got to punt it. Third drive, nice route uh, was ran and uh, by, by JSN on, on a deep play. He got, he, and he got the catch. It was a, a nice route, nice catch. Um, Again, to sh just showing his versatility as a receiver, being able to go on the inside, on the outside, and just be wherever on the field. Uh, the pass rush 
just again was just too much for the old line for uh, though. And uh, you know, Gino was holding strong in the pocket and was at least able to make throws and not take sacks on this drive. Um, you know, and he and he got one of the uh, plays off to JSN to move the chains, but ultimately, uh, Baltimore's defense uh, just was reading everything perfectly uh, after that. And then uh, we went for it on fourth down and turned it over on downs. And, and, and that was it. Uh, so let's, let's head over to the defensive side of things. Uh, we, I mean, on the first drive, you could tell, okay, this defense, yeah, they, 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 they poured a lot of their energy out in the first half. Um, and, uh, they were tired just to start this, the half already. They were, they had poor tackling, which was, uh, which led to a big run play. Um, and, and, and they were able uh, to get it back together after that and, and hold them to a field goal. But you could tell that uh, the defense was tired because normally uh, the Seahawks like are one of the best tackling defenses in the league. And uh, already to start the second half, they were just not tackling at the level that they normally do. On the second drive, uh, we were drawn off sides on a fourth down, which gave uh, the the Ravens uh, a chance to continue the drive. Uh, Leonard Williams was showing up already, so it was nice to see that we traded for him earlier in the week, and already he was making an impact and getting in the backfield and, and um, you know, just making his presence know so that we know that, yeah, this guy has what it takes. Uh, just It was just unfortunate that the team overall was not good today, um, you know, on this drive, we were reading the screen, so that was good to see because last week we could not stop uh, the screen plays at all, so they really were prepared to stop the screens this week. Um, uh, <laughs> but unfortunately, uh, on just you know a regular uh, play, we allowed 17 yards on the third and 18 and then allowed them to convert on the fourth and one. And then again, Lamar's ability to create in the pocket um, – and be able to run was proving almost impossible to stop. It was just, you couldn't stop him. Again, he could run uh, and then take off and gain yards himself, or he could start running, and, and that sucks up the defenders to try to stop the run, and then he can just throw on the run and get it to a receiver. Uh, you know... Uh, so they, they get down to the red zone and again, thankfully we were ready for screens and we were reading the screens very well again in the red zone and we stop them and we, uh, held them to just a field goal here on their next drive. Uh, we allowed an explosive rushing play for 40 yards, uh, for a touchdown, uh, again, just poor, poor tackling on this, uh, on the, on their fourth drive, uh, they, they, tried to give us a little bit of mercy and they brought in uh Huntley to uh take over at quarterback for uh, uh for Lamar Jackson because they had such a huge lead and again the poor tackling just missed tackles uh led to a 60 yard run for Baltimore Witherspoon almost gets an interception on an excellent read and break on a route that was targeted for Mark Andrews um, just, uh, he didn't, uh, quite come up with the catch, but knocked it down at least. Uh, and again, Witherspoon was good on the day. Uh, I mean, individuals, uh, it, looking at individuals, uh, for the team, nobody had a horrible day and some people had a really good day. Uh, it was just that the team overall was not good, but again, uh, the, you could still see that uh, overall this team is a, a good team, even in, in a blowout. So I feel like this is one that we're just going to throw out the window and say, yep, we had one of those games. Um, but there were still bright spots in there that showed that we um, still have talented players. We just have to you know, put this one behind us and move on and, and get ready for the next game. Uh, but anyways, we gave up a touchdown in the red zone on this drive as well. 
and then we lost a uh, big 37 to three. Uh, yeah, Baltimore is for real. Uh, they're shutting down the Lions, they're shutting down Seahawks, uh, and uh, Lamar is just getting better as the season goes on. Let's kind of look at some stats to uh, give us uh, a, a better picture of this as well. Uh, let's look at team stats first uh, today. And uh, the big one, again, you guys know for me, third down efficiency. Seahawks were one for 12. Just disgusting. Makes me sick. You cannot win games that way. You're never going to win a game with that sort of efficiency on third down. Just horrible. And look at theirs, six for 13. Right? I mean... Yeah, this is a little bit less than 50%, but at least they were getting first downs on third down. We were not doing it at all. And that is not good. We had 47 total plays because we were going three and out so much uh, to their 75. We had 151 yards to their 515. Um, our yards per play were 3.2 and theirs was 6.9. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we did hold them to 217 passing yards. They had 298 rushing yards, though. For us, just 123 passing and just 28 rushing. That, you know, the Seahawks and their brand of football, if they're just going to get 28 rushing yards on 15 attempts, that is not going to be a win for them. Uh, again, red zone, 0 for 1. Uh, penalties, 5 today for 29 yards. Obviously, we had two turnovers. We we also forced two turnovers, um, but didn't make anything happen with them. Uh, time of possession. Ours was 19 minutes, 15 seconds to their 40 minutes and 4 seconds. My goodness. That is just makes you sick to your stomach to see <laughs> like again it, the only way you're going to win that type of game is because your defense was getting a ton of turnovers and that's why your offense wasn't on the field and that wasn't the story today the story today was the offense couldn't stay on the field and that's why we didn't have the ball it was just no no good uh we can look uh, again, over here, let's look at the uh, box score and let's look at some individual players. All right, Geno Smith today was 13 for 28, 157 yards, uh, no touchdowns, an interception, sacked four times, uh, and uh, uh, a rating of 49.3. Uh, not, not a good day. Again, uh, looks like there was multiple plays where there's miscommunication. Uh, he had that play where he was staring down Fant uh, and just was like being too obvious that he was going there and almost threw an inter another interception with that one. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, I mean, again, there were still some bright spots for Gino, even with the pass rush in his face. You could see at times where he was. Uh, you know, at least getting throws away to make sure he wasn't taking the sack uh, because he he could have been he could have been sacked a lot more uh, this week and 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 thankfully uh, he wasn't uh, because of him getting the ball out of his hands quickly. Uh, I. The, the the people who are saying Geno Smith needs to get benched for Drew Locke, I don't know what you're watching, uh, and I don't know what you're thinking. I'd love to have you explain it to me, uh, how you think um, Drew Locke is going to have something that Geno Smith doesn't have uh, that is... Uh, that would have changed in this game, or I would love to know what makes you think that Gino is worthy of being benched. Uh, we, I mean, you could say there's eight turnovers in in the last four games. I get, I get that. 
Uh, some of those are strip sack fumbles. Um, so I, I don't, I'm not going to totally blame that on Gino when uh, some of the some of those are just the pass rush got there so fast uh, he didn't feel it coming or know that it was coming because it was there so quick. Uh, uh, you got to put uh, a handful of those interceptions on him for sure. Uh, but I just don't see, I don't see the, you know, a level of play that would be warranted for a benching. Uh, I'd love to, to, if, if you're one of those people, I'd love to hear your explanation of, uh, why, why he should be benched though. And why, uh, especially the people who are just like clamoring for Drew Locke, um, we we've seen him in there, uh, in games. Uh, we've seen him in the preseason, uh, and we've seen that he is not an accurate thrower. At least with Geno Smith, uh, there he's just there again. The last couple of weeks, uh, you know, and a lot of times for players, uh, turn turnovers come in bunches, and hopefully the bunch is over now. Uh, Geno has caught uh, has uh lost a lot of balls he has he has uh turned the ball over a lot hopefully that's all out of his system now and uh and we'll we'll get back to uh a player who can take care of the ball better but i i just don't see how drew lock um would make that any better because he is not as an accurate thrower. So I can only imagine, uh, you know, there being more <laughs> uh, turnovers than, than there has been uh, already. Uh, let, let's look at uh, Lamar, Lamar Jackson to compare. Lamar Jackson was 21 for 26 today, 187 yards. Well, sacked only the one time. Uh, and was uh, a 96.6 rating overall. Now, a hundred only 187 yards, but again, 21 for 26. My goodness, again, and the efficiency. Uh, being able to move the ball on third down. He he was lights out today. Yeah, it doesn't show up on the stat sheet, but he played like an MVP quarterback today. Uh, I, I think I saw that he was even joking about it on, on social media because I don't know how many points he scored in in uh, fantasy football. Uh, but I know it was, I think, I think it was like just a handful of points. Like it wasn't very much. He would like, he would have thought he had a really bad game based on his uh, fantasy uh, points. But uh, he played lights out, <laughs> you know. Um, he was efficient with the ball. Uh, he was running the ball well when, when needed. And, um, again, the accuracy, 21 for 26. Uh, yeah, he, he got the ball where he needed it to. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Seattle rushing. K9, 9 carries, 16 yards. Charbonnet, 4 carries, 8 yards. That ain't going to do it. Again, uh, another game where Charbonnet and Walker combined uh, less than 20 carries, less than 15 carries. That's not going to get it done. Um, again, we need to see more create creativity from um, Shane Waldron uh, on the play calling uh, in general. Uh, and and sometimes you go with what works. Uh, there was uh, plays that were working earlier this year that I don't understand why we haven't seen them called in the last few games. Uh, for them rushing, uh, Keaton Mitchell, nine carries for 138 yards. Again, we uh, let him get that 60-yard run. Jackson, 10 carries for 60 yards. Uh, his long was 23 Gus Edwards, 5 for 52 with uh, two touchdowns, a long of 42. 
Uh, Justice Hill even had 13 carries for 40 yards. So, yeah, it was uh, uh, that second half uh, where when we finally started breaking down, that defense was getting tired. Uh, we... we we just couldn't tackle. It was it was not good. Uh, receiving wise for Seattle today, uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba six receptions for sixty three yards led the team in that. Um, DK Metcalf had that one reception for the fifty yard gain. Uh, Tyler Lockett three for thirty two, uh, and then uh, uh, Parkinson had one for six. Charbonnet one for five. Uh, K9 had uh, the one reception for one yard, and that's it. Uh, I mean, like we said, they didn't have the ball very much, and so that's all there is to go over. That They didn't produce much of anything there. For Baltimore, uh, Mark Andrews had nine receptions for 80 yards. Odell Beckham Jr. had five for 56 and a touchdown. Isaiah Likely had four for 42. Rashad Bateman, three for 28. Zay Flowers, uh, we were able to hold the speedy rookie down for just one reception for 11 yards. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, j- j- again, just total 225 yards total. But again, with us going three and out, turning balls over, uh, we, would re- we, we were just giving them the ball in... Uh, prime position uh they didn't they didn't have to do much they didn't have to gain uh, a million yards uh uh through the air to to get into scoring zone uh, scoring uh range right because they're uh either we were turning the ball over or uh putting the ball back to them quickly and then uh when our defense got tired, they were rushing all over us. <laughs> so uh, they, they didn't have to do much passing today. Um, uh, Defense-wise, uh, you know, Jordan Brooks had 11 tackles today. Wagner had nine. Woolen had six. Maffe had six. Uh, and a sack. Diggs had six. Witherspoon had six. Um, you know, uh... just poor tackling in general though in that in that second half uh but again you could tell that they were worn down uh they were on the field today for 40 minutes uh so that he could only ask the defense to do so much uh and again for them defensively they nobody for them really had any standout numbers but uh, just the way their defensive line was able to get pressure today, knock balls down uh, at the line, uh, they were they were looking really good today. Uh, and again, uh, I don't even really want to dwell on this game too long. Um, the number, you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, you're going to have some of these games in the NFL. Uh, I, I'm not even upset or mad about this one. It's just one of those games. We could not get it going. Uh, and Baltimore just had everything going. Uh, I, I still believe <laughs> in the talent that we have on on this team overall. Uh, same thing you could say uh, about uh, the the Lions, right? Uh, they ran into the into Baltimore uh, and, and the same way, and uh, and and they got dominated as well. And they're obviously going to be. A uh, playoff team. Uh, it's just Bal- Baltimore is just going on all cylinders right now. I know it's kind of weird that uh, Baltimore just like dominated the Lions. They dominated <laughs> Seattle, and they and they and they barely beat the Cardinals. Right? <laughs> it just that's the NFL. You never know what's going to happen each week. You can't really predict uh what what the outcomes are going to be or which teams are going to give uh another team trouble or even beat them on any given sunday so this is just to me this is one of those games there's nothing even to you know that you're going to look at this game and say well this shows that uh this player is bad or that this is a bad team this is just as an individual game, this was just a bad game. Okay, move on. the The players all need to move on, get this one out of their heads quickly, and, and prepare for the next game because we have uh, just this 
gauntlet, right? This was just game one of a very long gauntlet of tough, tough uh, teams. I mean, I guess we have Washington Commanders next week. And, you know, with them uh, just trading everybody away at the deadline, uh, because I guess they're just, you know, giving up. (laughs) You know, they seem to be giving up on the team. Uh, you know, that, uh, you know, maybe, maybe that one's going to end up being a little bit easier than we originally expected, but still after that, we have to face the Rams again. Uh, and then, uh, then San Francisco, then Dallas, then San Francisco, then the Eagles. It's, it's, you know, the next, uh, what, six weeks it's not going to be easy. Uh, and, and at this point, we're 5-3. and three. We have the same exact record as the 49ers who had a bye week this week. And we, we have to keep pace with them. Uh, whatever uh, they end up doing over the rest of the season, uh, hopefully we can match that and do better. Obviously, we still have two games against them. So those two games are going to be crucial and to me I, I say that because this team uh is good enough that we could come in second place in this division and end up being a wild card uh because i believe that we are going to win enough games that we would be a wild card team but you want to win this division and uh you know potentially be uh like uh, a two seed in 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 the playoffs get a bye week you're gonna have to, uh, you're gonna have to beat San Francisco. So those two games are going to be crucial to winning this division. We got to go. The, we got to, you know, at home on Thanksgiving, we got to beat him. We got to go to San Francisco in the middle of December and 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 hopefully beat them. You know, if we could take two games from San Francisco, that would go a long way. Uh, to uh you know the the chances of our winning this division which i still think we have a shot at doing you know i'm not going to say because we lost a game today that we got dominated in that we can't win this division still we i mean we're still tied for first place (laughs) with 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 the 49ers and uh again to me our team overall yeah uh the depth across our team is way better than the 49ers. So I think we are uh, deeper. We're built to last. And, uh, you know, I, I think over the, the course of the season, we can be better than the 49ers. We shall see. Uh, again, we have a lot of uh, tough games coming up. So, you know, like I said, we're, we're, we're not going to we're not going to dwell on this one and uh you know feel like we need to call any individual players out for anything it was just a just a bad game all right so let me know how you feel though like again i just really want to know if you're one of the people who think uh gino needs to be benched let me know about it okay and, and why he needs to be benched now here's one say thing before i before i before i sign off because of the four games now with eight turnovers, um, I, I am thinking you got to draft, <laughs> right? We got to start drafting Gino's contract, the way it's structured. We can get out of it, not owe anything, and uh, move on easily. We don't even need to do that because of the cap space that he takes up. $10 million. Yeah, he makes twenty five uh, a year, but it's only counting ten towards cap because all the rest of it is incentives and signing bonuses. Perfect. You can draft somebody this year, uh, because this year's quarterback draft. The, I mean, this year we had four quarterbacks go. Uh, was it four? It was Stroud, Young, and Richardson, right? So it was just three quarterbacks. Uh, Levis fell all the way to the second round or third round. So 
we had three quarterbacks uh, that went in the top five. Uh, none of them would be, based on college careers, none of them would be top 10 in this next year's college draft, right? So uh, the, the, what I'm trying to say is we have a deep uh, class of quarterbacks in this draft. So even if you're not getting the best who's ever considered, whether you think it's Caleb Williams or Drake May, whoever you think is the best, uh, doesn't mean that you can't get a good quarterback at the whatever, you know, if the Seahawks, like I said, if they're not going to be, if they're going to be playing the way they're playing, they're not going to be a Super Bowl winner. So if they're drafting somewhere in the 20s, they're still going to be good quarterbacks available in the 20s. Uh, they're still going to be pretty good quarterbacks available in uh, the third round when we get our uh, third round pick from whoever we get it from. Well, well, we're getting it from Denver. We just don't know if it's going to be Denver's pick or if it's New Orleans pick, whichever one is lower. You know, there's there's going to be a lot of quarterbacks that are available this year that you could start grooming. Um, you know, just because you take a quarterback this year doesn't mean that you have to get rid of Geno, uh, especially because of his contract uh, and the, the little amount of cap space that it takes up. You can afford to take a, a quarterback uh, and, and start grooming them for the future. Uh, so that's what I'll say about Geno. What I've seen over the last few games uh, is making me feel like, okay, well, we have a lot of talent on this team. He's uh, that, uh, and he's good enough that um, because of the talent around him, this team could still go far in the playoffs and potentially get to a Super Bowl. But he's not. The, he's not looking like he's a long term franchise player, and he's not. He's not that answer right now. You, you we, they better have scouts looking hard at all the quarterbacks in this draft because. There's a lot of them, and uh, you, you don't want to miss one this year. Okay, so let me know, again, how you feel about individual players, the team's uh, overall performance. Are, is, there, is there something you're really dwelling on, or you're like me, you were watching this game, not even upset at all because <laughs> uh, it just felt like one of those games where nothing was going right, and that happens sometimes. All right, uh, well... That's going to be the show. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends. Uh, you know, uh, you know. One other thing I, I I want to mention before I get out of here: we are not feeling good about uh, this. But if you want to do feel, if you want to feel good about something, uh, you know, uh, like I said, I've been a podcaster for a long time. My biggest podcast is called the Daily Fortnite. That's Daily Fortnite podcast, and it comes out daily my biggest podcast has millions of downloads a lot of listeners uh if you're into fortnite uh or if you ever been into fortnite and you left uh, guess what they brought chapter one map back people have been talking about it for years they want the chapter one map again it's back a lot of the items from chapter one are back it's it's we're having a fun time right now it's a blast uh go check that out uh, and, uh, you know, listen to the fun times that we're having over there. <laughs> if you're, you know, if you're feeling bummed out uh, and you need something fun to listen to, we're having a fun time over there with Fortnite. So that's the daily Fortnite podcast. All right. Um, yeah, uh, that's it. So thanks for listening to the Seattle sports show where we watch legends awaken and breathe fire. So take cover because with the sea of sound, you will see us rise to reign supreme and win forever. ever.